See, I got sick of awkward silences, so now I just started ignoring the back, and now I forgot we were live. Good morning, everybody. We are live this morning. Welcome to those joining us online. Um, if you can stand with us, I read on Instagram yesterday. I know that's probably not the greatest source for um, spiritual advice, but I read on Instagram yesterday, it said, treat people as if Jesus died for them. And how true is that? If we start treating people like Jesus died for them, imagine some of the ways that we would maybe not treat the people around us. So this morning, we're going to go into a time of praise and worship. We just, we need some, I feel like there's some energy in here. The Holy Spirit is here. He was here in our uh, practice. So I just pray that you would just close your eyes. We're going to ask God to bless the service, and we're just going to get started. So dear Heavenly Father, I just pray right now, God, that you would just be in this service, God, that your Holy Spirit would continue to flow through the service and that you would just settle here, God, on us, each and every one of us, that we would just feel the weight of your presence on us this morning. In Jesus' heavenly name, amen. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, my hands lifted high, and oh God, the battle belongs. Hands lift 
All right, so we have one really major announcement. So everybody say next Sunday. Sunday. We're not here. <laughs> okay, so if you show up here, you're going to be probably lonely, maybe a few other people. <laughs> we are going to be at the pavilion next Sunday, um, June 5th. Um, if you have not signed up to bring food, there is a sign-up sheet on the back on the communion table. We would encourage you to bring some food. We want to have lots of food. Um, I'm going to save my cheat day for Sunday, so I'm looking forward to everything that you guys make. I'm eating it all. So bring your food. I'll bring mine, and we're all going to share. It's going to be great. Um, also, though, you are bringing your friends, so we can't wait to meet your friends that you've invited. Um, we're looking forward to just a great uh, Sunday morning service outside. Hopefully we have a beautiful sunny day like we do this morning and it's going to be great. The other thing is if you are able at 830 that same Sunday morning, Roger is going to be here loading up his truck and those who show up's trucks to bring sound equipment and all that fancy stuff down there. So if you are able to help with that, 830 at the church, if I know Roger, I'm going to say 8.15. He told me 8.30 this morning. 
he'll probably have his truck loaded up by 8.30. So I would show up around 8.15 if you really wanted to <laughs> be on time for that. So we're going to invite, um, there's, there's a ton of announcements rolling. There's, I know there's some things happening in the month of June that aren't quite close yet. There's uh, life groups, so you guys can see those. But I'm going to invite Cornelius and maybe Kevin. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> can you guys come and we'll take our tithe and offering this morning? One more quick announcement. The, for the potluck, uh, Debbie's got a Bristol board on the back uh, debit communion table. <laughs> So if, uh, if you can bring some, please help us out. If you can't, that's fine, but there is a sign-up thing back there, so appreciate it. Kevin, can I pick on you to pray for the offering this morning? While they're going around, uh, one of the advantages of being a worship leader, I get to sing happy birthday. So it's one of my beautiful little daughter's birthday tomorrow. So if you guys could help me sing it. Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruby. Happy birthday to you. All right, before we uh, go into a time of worship, we're going to sing a song about um, sparrows this morning. And I don't know, it's so nice in the morning. I don't know if you guys are up at 4.30, but you hear all the birds just singing. And I, I love it. I love getting up and just hearing that beautiful noise. But in Matthew uh, 10, 30 and 31, it says, But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more valuable than the sparrow. And we're going to sing this morning about how the sparrows don't have to worry. Their food is provided for them. Everything's provided. So if God loves the birds that much, how much more does he care for you? And how much more does he want to make sure that your needs are met each day? So if you can stand with us, we're going to pray, and then we're just going to enter a time of worship. So dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning, God, that as we just go into a time of worship, God, that we would just remember how valued we are, God. And on those days that we feel like we have nothing to give and that our maybe our self-esteem have taken a hit or something is coming against us, God, I just pray that we would remember the sparrows, God, and how much you love them, how much more do you love us. So I just pray this morning as we go into this time of worship that we would be reminded of that. In Jesus' name, amen. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. A tree that is planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be, Lord? Cause you take a Oh. 
just can't get past your kindness. I know there's got to be more, but I just can't get past your goodness. I know there must be more, but I just can't get past your kindness. I know there's got to be more, but I just can't get past your goodness, Lord. Cause you take good care of me. You take good care of me. You know what I need before I even ask a thing, Lord. Cause you hold me in your hands. With kindness and never end.
A cloud by day, a sign that you are with me. And a fire by night, a guiding light to my feet. And you found me, and you freed me. Held back the waters from my release. You guys can go ahead and have a seat if you want. Uh, how are you guys doing this morning? <laughs> Everyone's good? I want to hear that again. I'm not convinced. Are you guys good? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Some energy at the back there. That's good. Um, so I just want to say I am so encouraged. You guys have all been so encouraging and seeing your smiling faces as I step out and, and do whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, a nurse in Bible University 
who knows. Uh, I was actually, I've told a few of you guys, I was called out when I was 17. God had told me what I was going to be doing. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go to nursing school. So if you want to stop me, go ahead. So this is where I'm at today. And uh, yeah, so thanks for bearing with me. Last time I spoke with you guys, I could not find my toothbrush. So I told my dental hygienist this story, and you'll be glad to know that she gave me an extra one. <laughs> so just like Melanie was talking about, God provides even this sparrow, for even the sparrows, God provided for me. So I was able to brush my teeth today, so you'll be happy to know. Um, my biggest concern was, is my shirt on backwards or not today? So if you think I've got it all together, there, yeah, so you can just keep thinking that. So let's keep, let's pray, because I definitely need God's help to speak this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, just be with us this morning. May you just show us your word, Lord. May you just give us a, a feeling, Lord Jesus, in our hearts that we do not forget your word and draw closer to you this morning. May you just help us, like Melanie said, to leave here and be changed. And we just thank you for that. So um, today, I want to talk to you guys about this amazing book. So this is not only a rule book and a manual. It is also a poetry book, and uh, there is lots of information in there. I don't know if you got, guys have read through the whole Bible, but, but there's a lot of confusing stuff. So today I want to talk to you guys about keeping God's word in context. And I don't know if you guys have read through the Old Testament, but sometimes it's like, what is, what is God talking about? Why, why is this all happening? So I know... Um, Lots of confusing sentences, passages written in over uh, th like lots and lots of years by 44 different authors from different backgrounds. We've got fishermen, castlemen's raise your hands, woo woo. <laughs> we've got uh, tax collectors, we've got doctors, and uh, they really do have different backgrounds. So sometimes it's hard to figure everything out, and uh, but when we're reading the Bible, you and I, we are Bible interpreters, believe it or not. And uh, that's a, a big responsibility to find out exactly what God is saying. So in the New Testament, it's made up of mostly letters. So I don't know if you've ever read a letter from thousands of years ago. But if we just take out one sentence from that letter and say, that's what that meant, that's really, really not in context, that letter is uh, that whole passage that we're reading, the whole thought is what we have to understand. So I want to just tell you that we can't just take one or two verses out of the Bible and think we understand what God was saying there. So um, does anybody live with anyone else? Yeah, most of us. And we always understand each other. <laughs> always. <laughs> Steve and I, we, we have good, good communication. Like, he, he has been in bands his whole life, and I am the softest spoken person unless I'm angry, right, Steve? So we have good communication. Like, we can't ever hear each other. It's, it's terrible. And if I don't have all my glasses, I can't hear you, um, which is weird because I don't read lips. So um, e even with people in the same generation, we have trouble understanding. So how much more confusing is it when we read this book from thousands of years ago? So um, let's dive in. After Moses died, Joshua was called to be a leader. And God says in Joshua 1, verse 7 to 8, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate them, um, turning from either the right or the left. Then you will be successful in everything that you do. Study this book of instructions continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. God tells Joshua to study scripture, to think about it day and night, and you will be successful in everything that you do. God is saying that to us today, too, that we need to study God's word in order that we can do exactly what God is calling us to do. Um, when we're filled with God daily, we can prosper and succeed for God's kingdom. So most of us don't feel like leaders like Joshua. But we are. We're leaders in our workplaces and in our families. God is calling us to be a leader and to stand out, which is really hard to do. I don't know. Are you guys struggling with that? 
standing out <laughs> from every single thing in this world. It's, we're all so completely different from what the world stands for. And I find it hard to be a weirdo Christian, <laughs> believe it or not. But I'm learning to step out, right, Steve? I'm learning to embrace what God has called me to be. So not all of you are called to be a weirdo Christian. That's just for me. So <laughs> don't worry. You guys are a normal Christian. Um, so first point is to study. We need to study and cross-examine scripture. What does God say about this? What is the true nature of God? What is, um, what is God actually saying? So when I was a kid, my dad has a wallet, of course, and it went missing. And I was a little kid. And I just thought it was hilarious. So when my parents told me my dad's wallet was missing, what did I do? I laughed my head off. I thought it was the funniest thing. I never touched it, but because I was laughing, I seemed guilty, right? <laughs> so luckily, the wallet showed up not long later. I'm not blaming my brother, but I swear maybe he had something to do with it. Um, and my family to this day still thinks, I think, hey mom, that I took that wallet. So I definitely didn't. Um, I mean, I was, I was a petty thief and, and my mom used to clean the church and I remember taking things from the Sunday school and hiding them in my closet and she would just take them back to the church. So that was the end of my, my career. So, um, so we need to study the true nature of God. Jesus, he knew the true nature of God. Jesus studied scripture. He prayed. He studied everything to do with God's word, the true nature of God lived and breathed for God. And when he was tempted by Satan, Roger talked about this not long ago, he was able to throw God's words back in Satan's face. Jesus was fully man on earth, but he was filled with the spirit and he had no sin, so it just flowed freely from him. So not to scare you, you guys easily scared, but Satan, he knows scripture. Maybe better than us, some of us, all of us. He has it memorized. He has studied us, and he knows our weaknesses. Have we studied scripture in our areas of weaknesses that we can throw it back in Satan's face? In my course, we're learning that Jesus was sarcastic. I don't know if you guys are sarcastic. <laughs> Jake, yes. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Um, yeah, so Jesus was sarcastic sometimes when he was speaking to people. And um, I always thought that sarcasm was something that was new. But actually, it's not new at all. And he was able to keep his, his audience awake. The people who were listening to him, he used to shock them. And I do that too. Sometimes Roger does that. But with the G-string on the guitar. <laughs> it just never gets old, right? <laughs> So um, sarcasm, overstating, exaggerating, it's not new. Um, it was in the Bible thousands of years ago. And Michael, David's wife, was actually sarcastic. We can look at this in 2 Samuel 6, verse 20. When David came back with the Ark of the Covenant and he was super excited and he was dancing around half naked, Michael said this, When David returned home to bless his household... Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in view of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. Now, that kind of reminds me of a story about Steve. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I won't share that one. <laughs> you can talk to me later. No. <laughs> so when Jesus was talking the Sermon on the Mount, he was talking about the Old Testament scripture where we take an eye for an eye. And Jesus was actually exaggerating. Jesus' message was about loving our neighbors. He doesn't want you to go and gouge somebody's eye out, right? Right? <laughs> as long as we understand. Um, so he was just trying to show how detestable sin is and how, how terrible sin is. In my course, they teach you to assume that take scripture literally. So when you're reading a scripture, you take it literally, unless it's outrageous or it's rebuked by other scripture. So before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples he'd be right back. But when he descended, ascended into heaven in Luke, um, Luke says in Acts, the disciples are looking up at the sky after he left, and the angels came to him and to them and said, what are you doing? <laughs> and they were like, 
Jesus said he'd be right back. We're still waiting 2,000 years later, but Jesus said he would be right back to them. So um, the disciples thought that he was being serious, taking that literally, but Jesus meant he's coming back for us. Thank goodness, right? We don't have to stay here forever. So um, make sure if you're reading scripture, I'm trying to make this as exciting as possible because this this course is boring, man. I love the Bible. (laughs) I do. I love the Bible. But studying um, in school, you know, school, right? Does anyone like school? (laughs) Roz. Roz. (laughs) Okay. Nerd. No. (laughs) Just joking. (laughs) She's not. (laughs) So um, we really need to understand um, one scripture it won't make, won't make sense. We need to understand the cultural issues at the time. We need to understand what's going on, and it's important that we make sense of God's word. So um, my second point is looking at scripture, we need to keep it in context. What is the main theme of each letter and passage? Because the New Testament is made up of mostly letters, and there's only one main theme to each of them, and um, we can't make it say something completely different. So we have to ask ourselves, is this passage meant for truth for us today, or was it just meant for those people back then, 2,000 years ago, that small group of people, or is it meant for today? So I'm going to talk about Paul's letter. He wrote to the Corinth church, 1 Corinthians 121. I'm going to take a verse out of context, so we're just going to look at this one verse. For since the wisdom of God, the world through the wisdom, did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Does, God, does Paul say that God thinks that preaching is foolish? It sounds like that, right? But let's look at the entire thought. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 18 all the way to 25. For the message, bear with me because it's long. Let's stay awake. Whew. Okay, ready? Deep breath. For the message of the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligent of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? Here's 21, ready? For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to those to save those who believe. Jews demanded signs, and Greeks looked for wisdom, and we preached Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the the power of God and wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weaknesses of God is stronger than human strength. So that first doesn't mean that God thinks that preaching is foolishness. Paul is saying the world considers the preaching of gospel foolish. He thinks we're fool. They think we're fools. But God's wisdom puts human wisdom to shame. The smartest people who think the gospel is foolish are going to be dying for eternity. People you know, right? People I know. People who think we're just having fun here Sunday mornings. They don't understand what we're doing here. So if you open the Bible and see the opposite of what God intended, it probably is. If it doesn't make a sense and it, you need to start digging, um, what was the historical, cultural, political environment of the time different thousands of years ago. If I showed up in the past, I wouldn't understand. If somebody showed up right now from the past, they wouldn't understand us at all. Um, Jeans in church. My grandmother would have a fit. Rip jeans in church. Steve has a fit. (laughs) But I say, if the pastor can do it, then I'm okay with it. And God must be okay with it too, right? (laughs) Roger's not here to tease, right? So. (laughs) So my last point is someday, even in, the, in today's times, even the elite will be deceived. Even the best Christians you know are going to be deceived, and we need to know this book. So who, who, are your, who do you follow on social media? Who are your influencers? Kardashians. <laughs> I had that as an example, actually. 
Kardashians. Oh, Jake? Kardashians? Okay, good to know. Um, so <laughs> fake news is everywhere, and uh, I'm not even on social media, but I can help. Um, but I get everyone else's fake news. I hear it all. So the Bible is the only real thing. The Bible says even the elite will be deceived in Mark 13, 22, 23. For the false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, is pos if possible, even the elect. So be on guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. Adam and Eve, they were the elect. They were the best of the best at their time. And they were tricked into sin. Eve was like, this apple is amazing, or a fruit. It wasn't an apple, but it was a piece of fruit. And it looked good for food, and it's going to give me wisdom. Why doesn't God want me to eat this? He's just holding out on me. I don't know what he's talking about. What does God mean not eating it? Online shopping. Any of you during COVID done online shopping? Yes. Any of us been deceived by that? <laughs> I know I have. Never buy couches online. First time, second time. <laughs> Doesn't work out. Measurements are important, not just pictures. I was deceived. <laughs> so come to my house and see it all. It's, it's quite, the, quite the ride. <laughs> oh, I was deceived. Satan got in my head. I thought his thoughts were my thoughts. I didn't know God had made us special and unique. Satan is fighting hard for you. Really hard. And so is God. So if the worship team wants to come forward as I conclude. This is God's only book. And we definitely need to know it. Forget knowing anything else. I want to say knowing God and his word is the most important thing. Think about that. Knowing God and his word is the most important thing. Jesus knew it. I was going to say, what do the Kardashians th think about a certain topic, but <laughs> maybe I should ask Jake. <laughs> what, does, what does Jesus think about a certain topic? <laughs> if we never open this book, we can't live up to our potential. If we only eat once or twice a week, we will starve to death. This is our daily bread. Are you starving? Satan goes around, he prowls around, looking for the weak to devour. It's not always the weak anymore. He's going for the strong. He's going for the elect, the elite, it says in Mark. He's going for the whole pack. So we need to prepare ourselves and get ready and get stronger in God's word. I want to encourage you before we end that Jesus is coming back. <laughs> he loves us. And he's coming back for his children. Make sure that you know this. Because there's somebody prowling around looking to devour you. Don't let it be you. All right, let's pray. God, I just thank you for this time together. Just have your hand upon us all. May we just be able to just digest everything that you have for us today, Father. And go and, and live for you, knowing your word digging deep into your word so that we cannot be deceived by the evil one. May you just put in our hearts a love for others, Father, that they too might come to know you. And we just thank you for all that you're going to do in your name. Amen. Is this to your name Nothing praises to your The name that's so much higher than all name and all
lifted higher be lifted up be lifted higher and I sing conclude this time, God, with you. God, I pray that each person was touched this morning by the message that Julie brought. And I just pray that we we don't walk out of here the same, God. It's no good if we come in and out the same, God. God, may we be changed, God. May our hearts be changed and may we walk out of here different, God. God, may we just shine the light of Jesus to the people around us because it is true. You are coming back. And there are so many people in our world right now who, without us or other Christians who are like us, God, they are going to go out into eternity unsaved, God. And God, some of those people are our closest friends and family, God. So God, I pray that the light would just shine through us, God. We would be so radiant that they would have no choice but ask us what is going on and that they would be here, God. So next week, God, I pray that some of those people would join us, God, And we would see our friends and family just turn to you, God. So I pray that you would be with each and every person who is here and those joining us online. God, I pray that you bless us and be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen.